What's up guys, my name is Crescent. This product, this product, and this product all make over $10,000 every single month on Amazon. And in this video, I'm gonna show you the exact product research methods that I use to find these incredible products. And no, you don't need to be a genius, have any special skills, or have an IQ over 150 to apply these strategies. All you have to do is pay attention, think outside the box, and smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm. Okay, so the last one isn't gonna help you find any products, but it will help other people find this video, and it lets YouTube know that you found value and to show it to more people, just like you, and I'd really appreciate it, so thank you. And with that said, let's get started. Okay, so product research is the most important part of your Amazon business, as selling good products makes your life so much easier, but trying to sell a bad product is just an uphill battle the entire way. And if you haven't already, you will eventually realize that product research isn't easy. So before I dive into my strategies, I'm gonna share with you some valuable tips that I learned along the way and you're not gonna get from anywhere else. First, you need to understand that there's no such thing as the perfect product. Every product idea is gonna have some inherent risk. The key to being successful is to mitigate as much risk as possible. And when it comes to product research, that's making sure that you understand your competition, how you can beat your competition by having a competitive advantage, and ultimately making sure that the product that you're selling is profitable. So if you follow my proven strategies, you'll already be miles ahead of everyone else. But I wanna point out that if you follow my strategies exactly to the T, you're just gonna see the exact same product ideas that I'm gonna show you in this video, along with all the other people that are too lazy to apply a little bit of their own intuition and think outside of the box. The key is to take the techniques I'm about to show you and add your own little twist to them so that you can find product ideas that no one else is seeing. That way you can find product niches that aren't saturated and avoid much of the risk of dealing with competitive niches. Okay, so the first powerful method is exactly how I found my latest product and I call it the letter method. And this is a technique that I came up with on my own and up until now, I've only shared it with my students but I won't tell if you won't. So the letter method is actually really easy. All we're gonna do is jump onto Amazon and in the search bar, we're gonna choose a random letter and see what the Amazon A9 autocomplete pulls up for us. For example, if we start with the letter A, we can see that the autocomplete has pulled up a bunch of product ideas here. These autocomplete phrases are listed by popularity so you know people are searching for these products. Now, what I like to do is scan down the list of phrases and see if any of them catch my eye. The key here is to look for products that you don't immediately recognize. If you know what the product is, I would skip it. It's most likely gonna be way too competitive. You wanna focus on strange and out of the ordinary products. So as you can see here on this list, I'm sure we all know what these products are, so to get a new list of product ideas, add another letter. For example, B. Scan on the list and see if anything else catches your eye. If not, add another letter. Let's try O. Let's see here, so above ground pool cover clips. What's that? That sounds interesting. Okay, so I've never heard of above ground pool clips, but I assume this is something every pool owner is gonna need to keep the cover on. Okay, so let's analyze this niche. First, we wanna make sure we're using the correct keyword phrase. This is very important. You always wanna use the shortest, most relevant keyword phrase. In this case, I'm assuming these clips don't apply to just above ground pools. So I'm gonna do a search for just pool clips. You can see that the same products pulled up in the search results. So this is the better uh, keyword phrase. Okay, so to analyze the niche, we need to use a product research tool that will give us data to look at, such as how well these listings are selling, and how much money they're making. The tool that I use is called Helium 10, and they have a Chrome extension called X-Ray that's gonna give us access to a ton of data that you would never be able to get on your own. I'll leave a link in the video description below to a coupon that you can use to get a huge discount. Now, if we pull up X-Ray, we can see exactly how many units each listing is selling every month, how much money they're making, their sales history over the last few months, and a ton of other metrics. Now to fully analyze and validate a niche is an entire video on its own, but just to give you a brief idea of what's involved, you wanna make sure that the niche meets a few specific minimum metrics. So to do that, first, we wanna ignore the sponsored listings. These are the listings that have the SP logo next to them. We can actually turn them off in the settings so we don't have to see them. For example, most of the top listings should be selling their products for $15 or more. And if we take a look here, it looks like they are. You wanna make sure that the top listings are making at least $6,000 to $9,000 in revenue every month. And it definitely looks like this is the case here. In fact, these listings here are making over $40,000 each month. 
Wow, isn't that amazing? Hmm. And we also wanna make sure that the niche isn't too competitive. And we judge competition based on the number of reviews that each listing has. We wanna make sure that most of the top listings have less than 300 reviews. Now, if we take a look at the reviews, it looks like we're pretty close to a low competition niche. Most of the listings here have less than 300 reviews. And what also is interesting and catches my eye here is that most of these listings have great sales despite having average reviews. Like this one here, it has 3.9 stars, but they're making $44,000 a month. And you know what? I'm actually recording this video in real time and I can decide right now if I actually wanna share this product or keep it a secret and not share it on YouTube since I honestly can't believe I think I found my next product idea. So yeah, this is actually pretty crazy. Can you see how powerful this uh, letter method is? Anyways, if I do decide to share this product idea on YouTube and you're seeing this now, then I hope you appreciate it. And I know most people keep it for themselves and know from firsthand experience how frustrating it is when you can't see for yourself what a good product idea is. Anyways, if you're seeing this video and you appreciate it, smash the like button for me. It'll make it worth my while. Okay, so like I said earlier, analyzing a niche is an entire video in itself. So if you wanna learn more about it, I'll leave a link in the description to a video on this topic. So as excited as I am right now that we found this product, let's get back to the letter method. So if going down this path doesn't lead you anywhere, you can go back one letter and choose a different one and see where that leads you or you can start all over and choose an entirely new letter from the beginning and start over. Okay, that was pretty easy, right? The next strategy I'm gonna show you is actually just as easy. I call it the random string method. Okay, so I didn't put too much thought into coming up with some catchy names for these strategies, but they work, like I just inadvertently showed you. So anyways, the random string method is just that. We're gonna jump back onto Amazon and choose a category that you want to find products in, like home and kitchen. And in the search field, we're gonna enter a random string of letters Make sure you enter at least eight characters for this to work. And it's not rocket science. You can literally just hit any random keys on your keyboard. But make sure you put a dash in the beginning of the string. The dash is the minus key next to the backspace button. And when you hit search, you'll see a random list of products in the search results. How this works is each time you search for a random string, you get an entirely different list of products in the search. This is perfect because you wanna always be thinking outside of the box to find product ideas that no one else is seeing. Now, what you wanna do is pull up the X-Ray Chrome extension again so we can analyze the products that were pulled up. Hit load more at the bottom so that all the listings are pulled in. And then in the filters menu, we're gonna filter out the listings that don't meet our minimum criteria. So let's hide the sponsored listings, set the minimum price to $14.95, the minimum sales to 300, and set the minimum revenue to 6,000 and the max weight to two pounds, the maximum reviews to 300, and hit apply. Now we can see that these listings here meet the criteria that we set. So if any of these listings are strange and out of the ordinary, then like we did before, we can analyze the niche to see if it's a valid product idea to pursue. If not, then go to the next page of the search results, open up X-Ray and repeat the process. Now, if you wanna start all over, you can always enter in a totally new random string of characters and start again. Pretty easy, right? Like I said in the beginning, anyone can do this. You just need to put in the time and use a little bit of your own intuition. Okay, so moving on. The next strategy I like to use is called the inception method. Okay, I have to admit, this one has a pretty cool name. And if you haven't seen the movie, it's all about diving deep into your dreams, like dreams within dreams. So with that same idea, the inception method is looking for new product ideas within other product ideas. For example, when you're using any product discovery method and you find a product idea, so let's say we're looking at these reusable coffee pods. Actually, while we're here, let's take a look at the niche. I'm pretty sure it's gonna be way too competitive, but let's take a look anyway. So let's do a search for reusable coffee pods and open up X-Ray. And let's take a look at the numbers. If we take a look at the reviews, we can see that this niche is way too competitive, just like I thought. So anyways, to use the inception method, one place to dive deeper is to look at the seller store. If this product happened to meet the criteria we had set in our filters, maybe the seller has other products that might meet the criteria. So if we click on the store, Brick and Knight, we can see all the other products this seller has. Now, if we open up X-Ray, let's see if any of these products are viable. Again, let's set the filters here and click apply. So we can see that none of the products are good. Okay, so the store didn't produce anything for us, so let's go back to the original product detail page. And if we scroll down, we can take a look at the frequently bought together section for ideas. We can see these items are frequently bought together. Now, if any of these catch your eye, you can always dive deeper into these products. Or we can take a look at the related product section. You can scroll through all these different products here and see if anything here catches your eye. Don't forget, there's also another section at the very bottom. 
So as you can see, as you dive deeper into other product ideas, it can lead you down different paths to products that you wouldn't normally find using the original product discovery strategy. Okay, so this next strategy I'm gonna show you is actually how I found my very first product. I actually suggest using this method if you're new to Amazon and you're still learning how to find product ideas and analyze niches. This strategy uses Helium 10's product database called Blackbox. Basically, Helium 10 has analyzed all of the products in the Amazon marketplace and the tool lets you set filters to find products in the marketplace that meet those specific parameters. How powerful is that? Okay, so this is what the product database called Black Box on Helium 10 looks like. It's a great place to start looking for viable products and it'll let you get used to looking at specific data and metrics and familiarizing yourself with what the different filters mean. Now, this strategy will work in any marketplace, but if you're planning to sell in the US marketplace, choose US. Then pick the categories you wanna find products to sell in. I personally only choose specific categories as you can see here. I avoid certain categories because like clothing and shoes, there's way too many variations and returns to deal with. Electronics break all the time and can be hard to use. I avoid anything that you ingest or put in or on your body like lotions and creams because I just don't want the liability if someone was to get injured or hurt. Toys and games is way too competitive and the life cycle of the products is way too short. So here, set the maximum reviews to 300. Reviews is how we determine how competitive a niche is, so you wanna find niches that have low competition. Niches where most of the listings have a lot of reviews will be much more difficult and expensive to break into. I suggest sticking with standard size products. Oversized can be a logistical nightmare with extremely high fees. Set the maximum weight to two pounds, Anything heavier will be considered overweight and the fees will be higher. And for the seller types, select all. Now in the sales section, I suggest setting the price range between $15 and $50 to start. Anything less than $15 and there won't be any money left for profit. Basically, if we use the rule of thirds, one third will go to manufacturing, a third to fees, and the last third is your profit. So at $15, you'll make around $5. And anything over $50, the product won't be an impulse buy and the buyers will tend to do more research and comparisons before making their buying decision. Okay, so a pro tip, instead of just putting $15 here like what most people would do, most people will just set a round number here, but what I like to do is think outside the box and go slightly beyond the price range to capture any listings that are priced close to the minimum and maximum price range since sellers like to use different pricing strategies. So I'm gonna put 14.75 and 50.27. Again, this isn't rocket science, you can use any decimal point. Now remember the rule of thirds I just mentioned? If your goal is to make $3,000 of profit every month, then using the rule of thirds, we can roughly estimate that you'll need to find a product that generates around $9,000 in revenue every month. So set the minimum revenue to 9,000. But hold on, again, always think outside the box. I'm actually gonna set it lower to $6,000. I wanna capture any outlier products that might be selling decently well, but if I can improve the product, then perhaps it'll meet my revenue target of $9,000. Make sense? Okay, set the minimum monthly sales to 300. That's a good starting point based on a product that has a $10 profit margin in order to hit the monthly profit goal of $3,000. Okay, so keep in mind that none of these search criteria are set in stone. You can play around with them to find different products. For example, with the review rating, which is how many stars a listing has based on its reviews, you can set the maximum to 3.5 or something so that you can specifically look for products that are selling well despite having average or poor reviews. Okay, now when you click on search, Blackbox will pull up a list of all the products on Amazon that match the search criteria that we set. You can see the product image, title, price, monthly sales and revenue, the number of reviews, and the review rating, how old the listing is, and a ton of other metrics. So again, browse through the products and look for anything that's strange or out of the ordinary that catches your eye. And a pro tip here is if you notice, a lot of the listings made it past the filters that we set. Listings such as clothing, food, and brand name products like you see here. So what I do is I have a ton of keywords that I want to exclude from the search results. Now this is an evolving list of keywords that I've built over the years. And if I keep seeing the same type of products showing up in the search, then I'll add the product keyword to the list. For example, you can see here I have men's, women's, Nike, Under Armour, shirt, pants, sock, and so on. The key is making your product research as efficient as possible, so anything that you can do to save time and energy will help. Now, I'll post this list of keywords in the description below if you wanna copy and use them. Okay, so the next strategy I'm gonna share with you is a method that I've been using more recently. I call this strategy the barrier method. I call it the barrier method because I'm looking for product ideas that generally have some sort of barrier 
or have some difficulty for most people to get involved with. For example, in today's economy and for how popular e-commerce and selling on Amazon has become recently, I highly recommend selling high ticket products. High ticket products are products that sell for around $50 and up. The barrier here is the higher startup cost since the products are typically gonna cost more to produce or manufacture. But high ticket items typically have higher profit margins. And because of the higher costs, those niches typically have far less competition due to the barrier of entry. Now, another barrier you can explore is by looking at products that are difficult to sell. These are products that may need special handling, aren't easily breakable, require special certifications, or are only accessible behind categories that are difficult to get ungated in. For example, beginners tend to stay away from large or oversized products and seasonal products. If you can navigate around the hurdles surrounding selling those types of products, you can access products that most people can't or won't even attempt to sell. However, I would still stay away from patented and trademark products though. Trying to sell those products are just way too much of a hassle and risk to deal with. And the last strategy that I'm gonna share with you is what I call the intuition method. This method doesn't involve sitting in front of your computer, but rather taking a new outlook on how you view your day-to-day -day activities. Whether you're just driving around town, shopping, watching TV, visiting a friend's house or whatever, take notice of the items and products you see or interact with. You never know what might catch your eye or didn't even know was something you could buy. In fact, this is exactly how I found another product that I actually shared in a video a while ago. It's actually a pretty funny story. I was shopping at the grocery store and on my way back to my car, the paper bag I was holding ripped and everything scattered all over the parking lot. So not only was I embarrassed, I was super frustrated since I basically had to balance everything in my arms and juggle them back to my car. But anyways, to make a long story short, when I got home, for whatever reason, I decided to look up the paper bags niche on Amazon and literally within just a few minutes, it ended up leading me to a product that was selling for over $40,000 a month. I'll actually leave a link to that video in the description below if you wanna check it out. So basically what I'm saying here is to just keep your eyes open and you'll start seeing the world in a slightly different way. There are endless product idea possibilities around you every day. You just have to take notice of them. All right, so if you wanna get in touch with me, you can find all of my contact details in the video description below. I'd love to hear your thoughts, so leave a comment or question in the comment section below. I answer every single one. And as always, if you found value in this video, consider subscribing. And do me a favor, smash that like button for the YouTube algorithm. It really does help me out and I'd appreciate it. And make sure you ring that bell so you never miss a future video. All right, thanks for watching.